All right, everyone, it is October the 10th, 2013. Now, here's the headline. I'm going to put the link below. I promise. I will put the link below. I always do. For all of you, here's the headline. And I want to thank Brother Doug Ains, who sends me this. It came out just a few hours ago. Comet of the Century. About to fizzle. We're talking about Comet Ison, also known as the Comet of the century but i want to take you back one year 2012 comet elenin ele nin extinction level event that kind of fizzled out as well is nasa playing some kind of tricks on all of us let me uh take you to the article and i will provide you the link it has been billed as the Comet of the Century. And I want to make mention that all of the church has a close eye on Comet I Sun. Many are claiming that this is a sign of the Son of Man coming in the clouds. But the snowy dirt ball known as Comet I Sun now racing toward Earth may turn out to be just a flash in the pan. Though many sky gazers have been hoping for a dazzling light show peaking in November and December, Colombian astronomer, hope I can get his name uh, pronounced correctly, Ignacio Farron from the group of Computational Physics and Astrophysics, F-A-C-O-M, says Comet Ison appears to be starting to dissolve. Okay, right here now in the comment section, I want your opinion. Do you think that Comet Ison is really starting to fade away, to fizzle out, to dissolve? Let's see what the experts have to say. Farron has been using secular light curves to help uh, document the brightness history of comets. And after comparing Ison's light curves with eight other comets that broke apart, he now thinks Ison will soon just fizzle out and go away and be no more. All right. What do the mysterious four blood moons hold for Israel and all of mankind? The light curve of the comet exhibited a slowdown event characterized by a constant brightness with no indication of a brightness increase tendency, he said. Farnan added the slowdown started January 13th, and it continued until the last observations made in September. Now, I know, before I carry on, there are many, many on YouTube that are doing their best to track Comet Ison. I don't know, are, do they have the... Uh, sophisticated enough equipment to do so as these uh, astronomers have um, there's many out there putting videos on uh, comet Ison, and now there's a object within the comet and I, I'm just questioning because I don't know do they have the technology at their in their homes uh, with whatever type of uh, telescopes and equipment they have to really see comet Ison with an object inside it are they getting pictures from NASA? Because this expert seems to think it's fizzling out. Um, let me continue on. For nine months or more than 270 days, the brightness of Ison has remained constant. A behavior without any example in cometary astronomy, uh, and that is a troubling sign for the survival of comet Ison. Celestial uh, forecasts have predicted the comet should shine as bright as the full moon, being one of the brightest uh, ever recorded in history, if it doesn't fizzle out, that is. Some experts have estimated the core of the object to be between 0 0.12 miles and 1.2 miles across, based on the amount of dust it sheds, though others believe the nucleus is roughly three miles in diameter. Comet Ison, whose official name is Comet C-2012-S1, slash was discovered in 2012 by two Russian amateur astronomers. 
Vitaly Nuski and Artyom Nath, I can't pronounce the last name, using a telescope for the International Scientific Optical Network, thus providing the name iSun. So this is where the name iSun comes from, for my viewers, that maybe you're unaware. And we're looking at the name iSun, like Son of Man, but International Scientific Optical Network, I-S-O-N-I, -S -S International S, scientific, O, optical, N, network. That's where the name actually came from. Allegedly, astronom uh, astronomy experts call it a sun grazer, meaning it will pass close to the sun when it gets to the heart of our solar system next month. The most exciting aspect of this new comet concerns its preliminary orbit, which bears a striking resemblance to that of the Great Comet of 1680, wrote Space.com. Sky-watching columnist Joe Rayo in September of 2012. That comet put on a dazzling show. It was glimpsed in daylight, and later, as it moved away from the sun, it threw off a brilliantly long tail that stretched up from the western twilight sky after sunset like a narrow searchlight beam for uh, some 70 degrees of an arc. That's very interesting. Sky watchers with the NASA Organized Comet ISON Observation Campaign, or CIOC, have said, uh, provided ISON survives a solar close shave, and there's certainly no guarantee that it will, the comet may uh, then be visible to the naked eye sometime in early December in the western sky just after sunset. Observers in, nor in the northern hemisphere will have a much better view of ISON than folks in the south. This is quite a long article. Let me see. I'm going to read. Well, it's not too much longer. Some good information coming out here. Uh, the European Space Agency, ESA, says the best viewing time will be in late November during its closest approach to the sun in early December until reaching its closest point of 40 million miles. Did you hear me? 40 million miles from Earth on December 26th. On Monday of this week, uh, astrophotographer and astronomy educator Adam Block, boy, it's early to pronounce these big words, at the Mount Lennon Sky Center in Tucson, Arizona, photographed Comet Ison streaking through space in a stunning fashion. Um, on Monday, of this week. Uh, I already read that. I am certain more images of this will be coming out shortly as it increases in brightness during its drive toward the sun, Block told NBC's um, Alan Boyle. I am certain more images of this will be coming out shortly as it increases in brightness during its dive toward the sun. Here is hoping it survives that when devious and emerges as something spectacular on the side, although its future is questionable. Being prepared is always a sure thing to take advantage of quickly changing conditions. The possibility of a bright display from Comet Ison will likely spark the interest of Bible believers, Christians looking forward to the second coming of Jesus. In the New Testament, Jesus predicted celestial signs concerning the end of this current age, which we are at the end of this current age, and his return to earth to govern the kingdom of God. And the stars of the heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the sign of the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Mark 13, 25 through 26. We'll go back to this in a moment. Um, let me go to this now. Mark 13, 25 through 26. And the stars of heaven shall fall. The stars are always, when you're getting deep into theology and to uh, 
end time Bible prophecy are referred to as angels. Now these are the fallen angels. This is for the end, uh, right before the second coming. It's not for us today. We're waiting. We're on the brink of tribulation to begin. The the seals have not yet been opened. I know there's a lot of stuff on YouTube, and the seals are been. We're already at the trumpet period, getting ready to go into the vile period, but we are not. The Lamb has not opened the seals yet, but it's going to happen very quickly. Uh, but what this passage in Scripture is, is right before Jesus uh, returns for the second coming, not the rapture of the church. And the stars of heaven shall fall. That means the fallen angels have come down with Satan. And the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. That is for uh, the second coming. Comet Ellen and E L E N I N extinction level event. We're still here. Comet I Sun. And you see that word I Sun, but I just explained to you where, where the name actually came from. And it appears to be losing its brightness and will it when it makes its approach to the sun will it fizzle out leave me your comments everyone link will be below